The Asdarka pterosaurs are truly one of the most impressive groups of animals that have ever graced this planet. These absolutely huge creatures were not only the largest pterosaurs, but some were also the largest flying animals of all time. Now, I've realised that I seem to have severely neglected pterosaurs on this channel, with the last video fully dedicated to these remarkable creatures being over two years old, so I thought now would be a good time to sort that out. And what better way than to cover my personal favourite group of pterosaurs, the awesome Asdarkids. Asdarkids were a highly successful pterosaur group that proliferated towards the very end of the Cretaceous period whilst many other pterosaurs are thought to have been going extinct, but there's also traces of their presence way back at the very start of the Cretaceous as well. Although slightly controversial, it does seem fairly probable that Asdarkids were around then too, meaning that the group lasted for about 80 million years in total, making these animals the longest surviving family of pterosaurs. And that's not the only success the Asdarkids had, either. Fossils representing members of this group have been discovered all over the world, from North America to Africa and in Asia, indicating that these giant pterosaurs had a distribution that stretched all across the ancient world. But the most astounding thing about these animals is how such huge creatures were able to fly. With some species standing about as tall as a giraffe and possessing absolutely ridiculous skulls, they still managed to take off and fly at considerable speeds high above the prehistoric landscape. However, that doesn't mean they were restricted to staying up there, as we'll see in the next video, with some Asdarkids being terrifying ground stalkers too. So, let's take a look at some of the individual species and genera that actually make up this unique pterosaur grouping. First, there's the animal that very kindly gave its name to the whole family, Asdarko. Coming from towards the beginning of the late Cretaceous, Asdarko was first discovered in the Bisekti formation of Uzbekistan. This pterosaur was described in 1984, being used to create the group Asdarkinae, which at that time was included within the larger Pteranodontid family. Of course, once other similar creatures were eventually discovered, they were put into their own family, the Asdarkidae, instead of Asdarkinae, and reclassified outside of the Pteranodontids. Quite a few fragmentary remains are known from Asdarko, including several neck vertebrae, bones from the wings, and bits of jaw. The neck vertebrae are very important here, as they're one of the main defining features that we use to identify which pterosaurs are Asdarkids. This family share neck vertebrae that have the characteristic of being very elongated, as well as being fairly rounded in cross-section towards the middles of the bones, and it's these features that give Asdarkids their iconic long necks. The paleontologist who described Asdarko back in 1984, Lev Nesov, noticed these features in several different pterosaurs, thus using this as a reason to classify them all together in the same group. Nesov also noticed that the bones in Asdarko's neck joined together in such a way that meant it likely would have not had much flexibility there, and he came to the conclusion that the animal must have been some kind of skim feeder, restricted to lowering its head down to the water to scoop up organisms as it flew above the surface. We'll talk much more about Asdarkid paleoecology in the next episode, but since 1984 it's been revealed that these pterosaurs were almost certainly not skim feeders, instead employing a very different feeding technique. Next up, the most famous Asdarkid, Quetzalcoatlus. This absolutely enormous creature was among the biggest flying animals that ever existed, with recent reliable estimates putting the pterosaur's wingspan at about 10.5 meters across, and a standing height of over 5 meters tall. Now, despite Quetzalcoatlus' status as the most famous Asdarkid, and how often it is portrayed in various media, not a lot is actually known for certain about it. Interestingly, there are in fact two different species of Quetzalcoatlus known at the moment, the huge Quetzalcoatlus northropi, as well as a smaller unnamed species, currently known as Quetzalcoatlus sp. The remains of the larger species were first discovered in 1971, in 68 million year old rocks in Texas. Parts of an enormous wing were uncovered, and it was clear that they belonged to a creature of a significant size. However, this is all we have of the species. It's not at all a well-known pterosaur, unlike the other Quetzalcoatlus species, of which there are several partial skeletons known. So, it's actually largely due to the better-known smaller species that we get the familiar reconstructions of a giant Quetzalcoatlus northropi from. Unfortunately, not a lot has been done to clarify what relation the two Quetzalcoatlus forms actually have to one another, and it could turn out that they're the same species, or two different ones. This makes accurately reconstructing the 10.5 meter wingspan animal very difficult, and could even bring into doubt the size estimates of the creature, if the forms end up being from very different Asdarkids. In short, a lot more work is needed to sort out the mess surrounding the taxonomy and relationships of Quetzalcoatlus, but there clearly was a pretty huge Asdarkid roaming Lake Cretaceous, Texas. Now we come to a very interesting member of the Asdarkid family, Hatsigopteryx. This giant was discovered in Lake Cretaceous rocks from Transylvania, which represent what was an island habitat during the Cretaceous period. 
Located in the prehistoric Tethys Sea, this island is known as Hattic Island, and the enormous Asdarkids that lived there seem to have been its rulers. The first bones discovered of this animal were actually thought to be the fossil remains of some sort of theropod dinosaur, due to how robust and big they were, but it was later realised that they represented a new pterosaur, and they were named as such in 2002. This animal had a pretty immense skull and neck, even for an Asdarkid, and a recent 2017 paper drew some very interesting conclusions from a neck vertebra belonging to Hatsugopteryx. This pterosaur was a large creature, however the 2017 paper found that its neck was relatively very short compared to similar sized Asdarkids, and so it turns out that it may have been an extremely powerfully constructed pterosaur that stalked the island environment searching for prey it could easily and brutally attack. The large, powerful skull on the end of a short, heavily muscled neck seems like it would have made the perfect weapon to use for this sort of lifestyle, and you can imagine the terror such an animal would have instilled in the small dinosaur fauna of Hattag Island. As well-known pterosaur researcher Mark Witten, who is also one of the authors of the 2017 paper, says, If you imagine a giant mix of a shoebill stalk, a ground hornbill, and the terminator, you may get an idea as to what Hatsugopteryx was probably like when it was alive. This next Asdarkid taxon, Aramborgiania philadelphiae, has a fairly long and dramatic backstory to it. To understand the full tale, we first need to go back to the 1940s, in Jordan. Early in the decade, a railroad worker discovered a fossilised bone poking out of a cliff, and it soon found its way into the hands of the director of a local phosphate mine. A few years later, the fossil was sent to Paris, where it was examined by French paleontologist Camille Aramborg who in 1954 decided that the mysterious bone was a metacarpal from a giant pterosaur. Five years later, in 1959, Aramborg gave the animal the awesome name of Titanopteryx, meaning Titan Wing. Sadly, from then on, this fossil did not have a good time. Soon after the bone was examined by Aramborg, it became lost to science, as no one knew where it had gone or what had happened to it. In 1975, a different paleontologist realised that it had actually been misidentified by Aramborg, and it was not a metacarpal at all. Instead, it was one of the animal's characteristic long, thin neck vertebrae. It was then in the 1980s that it was realised that the name given to the pterosaur, Titanopteryx, was already in use by another organism. And what kind of animal had stolen the awesome name of Titan Wing from this giant pterosaur? A fly. So, according to the rules of the ICZN, the second animal called Titanopteryx had to change its name. A Russian paleontologist therefore renamed the pterosaur in 1987, calling it Aramborgiania, after Camille Aramborg. And at this time, the original fossil was still missing, prompting paleontologists Dave Martel and Eberhard Frey to go on a quest to rediscover the vertebra. They travelled to Jordan in 1995 to search through the collection of the phosphate mine that first lent the bone to Aramborg in the 50s, but were unable to locate the original fossil. After returning back to Europe, the scientists received word from an engineer of the mine who discovered that the vertebra had been sold to a geologist in the 60s, and it had then been donated to the University of Jordan in 1973. The bone was indeed found in the collection of the university, and so the original fossil could now be properly examined by Martel and Frey. Their examination revealed that although the bone was not complete, it was very large. In fact, it was larger than the same vertebra in Quetzalcoatlus, and by scaling up Aramborgiania, the paleontologists found it to have a wingspan of about 13 metres. However, since this estimate, other calculations have arrived at much smaller values, more in the region of a 7 metre wingspan. Working out how large this animal was is difficult considering how few fossils of it we have, limited to only the original vertebra and possibly a few bits of wing bones, and so until more is discovered it's not entirely certain how big Aramborgiania could have gotten. But the most remarkable thing about Aramborgiania has to be its incredible neck length. At an estimated 2.6 to 3 metres long, as well as the addition of a massive pointed skull on top of it, this creature was up there with one of the longest necks of any tetrapod, excluding sauropod dinosaurs. As Mark Witten points out, about 5 metres of neck and head being supported by a few vertebrae that are essentially just thin tubes is a pretty extreme body plan. Nevertheless, adaptations in their vertebrae show that Aramborgiania was quite able to support this huge mass. In fact, they could better support large masses with their neck than any other Asdarkids could, due to reinforcements present in their bones. So, Aramborgiania is another incredible Asdarkid species with a dramatic backstory and amazing anatomy though for some reason it doesn't tend to get as much attention in media as the other giant Asdarkids do. Right, so we've had a brief look at some of the characters that make up this great family of pterosaurs, although there are quite a few more that haven't been mentioned here. Now, this video was originally going to be a single episode, however, for reasons of running out of time, I've decided to split it up into two parts. 
In the next video, we'll be looking at the biomechanics of just how these huge animals managed to get off the ground and fly about, as well as what kind of lifestyle they had. I hope you've enjoyed learning about these remarkable creatures, and make sure to watch out for part 2 so you can find out even more. If you would like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.